If you're anything like me, then you know the story. It always goes the same way. If you have an idea that's supposed to look like this, and then you try to execute it, and it looks more like this. However, over the past years, I've discovered these three ways to improve my drawing technique dramatically. Now, by no means do I pretend to be the most talented artist out there, but I'm pretty good compared to the average architect. And I think this is due to the skills that I have developed and not the talent, and I can categorize these skills into three following categories. One way to find the most terrifying thing on earth, the blank page, is by practicing your strokes. Think about this the same way you would think about going to the gym, where you have to do a warm-up before your workout, and the stakes in the drawing are similar. Now, you're obviously not gonna injure yourself when you draw without warming up, but you won't get the best results unless you prepare yourself. So I usually start this process with A4 piece of paper, and then I start tracing strokes along the longest edge of the paper, and then I do the same in the opposite direction, perpendicular to the first strokes, along the shortest stage of the paper and finally I do the same with the diagonals. Now I do all these things on the same sheet just to save the paper because ultimately I will discard of this paper. After I'm done with the strokes I'll then proceed with the ellipses and the circles and I'll use these strokes to keep the orientation of the ellipses correct. So I borrowed this technique from industrial designers and automotive designers and I think it's also used by painters and artists and the purpose of this exercise is to really loosen up your hand muscles so that the drawings appear more free and natural. So the category number two is doodling, and I found doodling to be a really good way to get into the creative flow. And I like this approach because of the three things. Number one, you can come up with loads of ideas when you don't know what to draw. And the way to do it is you just draw the first idea that comes into your head, then the second, third, etc., until you fill the whole page. And that gives you plenty of ideas that you can potentially use to draw more drawings. Number two, if you're an architect, you can save a lot of time by doodling stuff first before investing time into 3D modeling or CAD. And number three, which is my favorite one, is that you can and experiment with your drawing style when you do doodles. Screw-ups and mistakes on small doodles are barely noticeable, but the upside of discovering a new drawing style or improving your existing drawing style are really worthwhile. And there's a couple of ways to go about doodling. I know a lot of artists will fill the whole page full of doodles of different objects and things from their imagination. I don't do that personally, I prefer to use doodling when and if necessary. So for example, if I have a thing I need to figure out, a junction or detail or some sort of arrangement that I need to think of, before I invest time into CADing or 3D modeling, I will doodle that thing out in my sketchbook at work and only after doing that I will proceed to a more time-consuming task. And doodling in my opinion is the most important drawing practice skill there is because it requires letting go of perfectionism and engaging in your creativity. So the category number three is the observation skills and it really boils down to looking at the nature and drawing what you see. And I think it's one of the most invaluable skills there is as an artist because it forces you to look at nature, analyze what what's there in front of you and then trying to replicate it on a piece of paper. And I think there's two ways to go about this, is either embracing a fully realistic approach where you draw exactly what you see, or alternatively, and this is my preferred way of doing this, is to use a stylistic approach which requires observation skills and then interpretation of putting what you see in front of you in much more kind of free way where you can kind of move and shift things around to suit your imagination. Drawing in the real life is the best way to draw because it relies on the nature and you can study things like texture, composition, scale, materiality, all those things that are really vital to then be able to produce a drawing that's kind of much more artistic and stylistic. There is that foundation of understanding of real life objects that's still required in order to come up with something special and unique because the best kind of drawings, unless you're going for abstract art, are the types of drawings that are inspired or informed by the nature. So these three things, warming up, doodling, and observation skills, have all improved my drawing skills. However, there is the last critical component that is the basis for all of these things, and that is practice. Now, without practice, any drawing skills that you acquire, they fade away quickly. And I have been guilty of this in the past, where I would neglect drawing practice, and my skills would fade away really quickly. And I still don't do drawings every day, necessarily, because, you know, as an architect, there are other things that are needed to be done on a daily basis but I do try my best to basically practice as much as I can by doodling in my sketchbook whenever the need presents itself so whenever I have the thing to solve that's to do with the project or the arrangement I will always use doodling as a basis in solving that problem and it also has the additional benefit of when I need to do a bigger project or a bigger drawing that I still have those drawing skills that I can deploy if you want to learn more about how to draw like an architect then check out this video over here because I talk about specifics of how to draw like an architect things like line weights, line types, scale, all those things and more in order to produce a compelling architectural drawing. So check that video out if you're interested and I'll see you on the other side.